Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's having a nice Sunday. Um, so my name is Tia Robinson. I am also known as the Mindful Coach on Instagram, and I'm a mindfulness meditation instructor. Um, I teach people how to adopt a mindful practice so that they can learn how to reduce stress and so that they can, you know, maneuver through everyday life with a sense of balance and well-being. Um, a lot of the times we as Black women, we take the weight of everyone else's responsibilities and put it on our shoulders. And self-care is really the last thing that we focus on. And I'm not talking about self-care from the standpoint of like things like going to get our hair done or our nails done, but like just that really, really internal self-care and work that we need to do from a spiritual grounding standpoint. That's really, really what I focus on. Um, I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia, but um, I do do quite a bit of traveling. I've worked with organizations such as Black Girls Run, Silence the Shame, um, Georgia Tech, and I have been a meditator for 13 years. Um, so it is something that I absolutely love and enjoy. And in the light of um, us moving to a virtual um, presentation, I just wanted to kind of go through and share something with you all to kind of go through um, and just talk about and discuss so we have something to follow along with. So I'm gonna share my screen. And I put together just a couple of slides um, to kind of take us through this process. So what I really want to focus on is really us understanding what the art of pause is and what the art of, art, art of meditation is. So really what I'm going to start off with is just kind of um, explaining specifically what mindfulness is um, and, you know, the definition. Um, but before I, I go into that, I wanted to talk about my journey specifically. So how I got into this practice 13 years ago was I was working in corporate America, um, bright eyed, bushy tails, super ambitious, um, super eager to get a corner office and marketing. Um, you know, I always saw myself as like a VP or a CEO. So um, I was definitely super ambitious, but finally got into corporate America and <clears throat> just really um, found it to be a stressful environment. Um, I started to report to a boss that I perceived as difficult, um, right? Our, our energies did not mesh, um, but that was my perception of her. And as a result, I started to um, stress out. I started to suffer from self-doubt. Um, I was overly critical of myself. Um, I was going into the office is constantly worried um, and these may be things that you know folks may um, may resonate with some of you all online but it was something that was really new to me I've always been the type of person or considered myself the type of person that could rise to the occasion right and I just felt like my body and my energy was just completely off right and what that ended up manifesting into was panic attacks so I literally would go into the office and have a meeting with this person and five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the meeting, my body literally started to break down until one day I found myself in the office, in the bathroom, holding on to a public toilet, <laughs> trying to ground myself because I was having a panic attack and I thought I was having a heart attack. Um, so with that revelation, I decided that I would go to my doctor and figure out what was going on. Um, and so I went to my doctor and he said, well, you, you know, you didn't have a heart attack, you had a panic attack. And I was like, okay, so what do we do? And he said, well, you have two options. You can either take these pills or you can quit your job. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so neither of those are really viable options um, because I have bills I need to pay and, um, Anyone who knows me knows that I want to go the holistic route when it comes to anything when it comes to my health. 
So what I started to do was I started to research different things that I could do to help with panic attacks <clears throat> and exercise and meditation was one of those or two of those things. So I immediately found a class here in Atlanta that was six weeks long that took you through how to adopt a meditation practice. And it really is the foundation for what it is that I use today to um, teach folks because it helped me so much. The first time I sat down and did a meditation class, I was like, what is this? <laughs> Why didn't anybody tell me about this? This stuff is awesome. Like I immediately felt like my spirit and my body and my mind all shifted together and just found this 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 sense of peace. And so that's why I'm super passionate about teaching it to women and women of color because when I look to the left and I look to the right 13 years ago, I was the only black woman in that space, right? Um, there were probably 40 people in class and I was only black woman, let alone, you know, just a woman of color. And so knowing that it was so helpful for me from a meditation standpoint and just in terms of my growth as a person and, and, and me developing a business around this, um, I definitely wanted to make sure that it was something that I was sharing with women of color. So when we look at the definition of what mindfulness is, it really is paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and being not judgmental, right? And a lot of people are like, okay, well, what does that actually mean, right? So what it actually means is just sitting and being still and just really breathing. We use our breath and mindfulness as an anchor to just really tap into this sense of the present moment. And so after this presentation, I'll definitely work through how do we go ahead and do that. But I think one of the things that's key for us as women of color is non-judgmental, right? A lot of the times we overly <clears throat> critique ourselves. And a lot of my students that I have, I, I, I you know, they say, I, I can't quiet my mind. I can't this, I can't that, I can't control it. And, and really what mindfulness is not about controlling the thoughts that go into your mind. It's about not being reactive, right? So as you sit, you know, your brain will ask you, you know, what are we going to eat after this class? Or, you know, did we pay that bill? You know, are we going to go ahead and wear this tomorrow? And really what we strive to do in mindfulness meditation is to learn how to not be to not respond to the thoughts that pop into your mind. Um, everything that pops into your mind isn't truth, right? And everything in, that pops into your mind doesn't need to be responded to. And that's really, really what the practice is about. It's about just being still, focusing on your breath, being present, and just letting things pop up and fall to the side. So why should we practice mindfulness or still, stillness? Well, I think I touched on that a little bit earlier, but we'll go into it a little bit more. Um, really what mindfulness is a whole wellness experience, right? So if we focus on and we talk about our holistic health. We talk about um, wanting to live more natural, organic lives. We talk about wanting to be balanced. Mindfulness really is that piece that allows us to achieve that whole wellness, right? We've got to work on the body. We've got to work on our spirituality, but then we also have to train our brain. Those are really the three components that make up a whole wellness program. And so mindfulness is key. Also, what meditation does is it really helps us when it comes to the effects of stress on the body, right? Um, you know, now we're, we are in a period of time where a lot of people have been expressing to me that they're experiencing stress and anxiety. Um, and really, the effects of stress on the body is pretty, pretty much the, the, the last thing we really want to be experiencing um, currently right now. Because really what it, stress does, it really weakens the whole body system, um, you know, from our moods and our um, energy, our ability to concentrate, stress really breaks down 
us from a mental standpoint, which can lead to things such as depression, anxiety, and panic attacks. But it also increases the blood pressure and has effect on the heart, the heart rate, um, and makes you more susceptible of being at risk for some things like heart attacks. It completely fatigues the immune system, right? So this is very important for us right now as we are all um, on Corona Watch. We really wanna make sure that our immune systems are operating and functioning at its peak and at its highest. Because when we're stressed out, it really reduces our ability to recover from illness and it makes us more susceptible to illness. So we really wanna make sure that <clears throat> we're reducing that stress spe specifically from an immunity standpoint. It leads to things such as nausea, stomach cramps, um, acid reflux, it lowers our libido. Um, Crystal might have touched on that in her last presentation, but um, it definitely lowers our libido. And for women, it increases our period pain um, every month. We experience things such as aches and pains in our joints and muscles, and it lowers bone density. So the effects of stress really do um, affect us from a uh, physical standpoint. And, you know, people always say, well, you know, I'm not stressed out or what, what does stress actually really look like? And so I, I, I'm a person that loves memes and um, loves graphics. And so these are just some cultural um, relevant icons in terms of when it comes to well, what does stress actually look like for the black woman, right? These are some of uh, movies sitcoms, TV shows that um, we watch and, and we watch and we love. And a lot of the main characters are exhibiting um, the effects of stress, whether we realize it or not. You know, we look at Big Mama from Soul Food and just in terms of her diet and, and having diabetes, you know, she probably dealt with the weight of her family. Um, which resulted in, in obesity and ultimately, you know, took her life. Olivia Pope, you know, how could she not be stressed out? Um, we got Florida Evans with the classic damn, 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 and, and Miss Sophia. So, you know, this is what stress looks like for us, where a lot of the times we look at things like this and we think it's normal. So how can meditation help me in my everyday life? Um, well, some of the benefits of meditation um, are very, are, are the opposite effects of the, the um, effects of stress when it comes to meditation. So when you actually meditate, it lowers your blood pressure. It slows down the cardiovascular system. It relaxes the nervous system, right? So what we do is we move from a state of stress um, or fight or flight, and we move into a state of rest and relaxation. And so what that is, is moving you from your sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is more of a state of relaxation, the state that we really want to be in um, from day to day. We tend to be overstimulated, whether that's driving in the car, being on our cell phones, um, you know, just various different Wait, <clears throat> excuse me, Tia? Tia, we've lost your sound. Can you hear me now? Okay, okay. Sorry about that, I'm not sure what happened. Um, so as I was saying that we wanna really move us into a state of rest and relaxation, um, as opposed to being overly stimulated, stimulated, which is what we tend to be in as Americans um, from day to day. It helps to um, diminish the intensity of migraines and headaches. And people, you probably can, um, 
you know, folks that have suffered from headaches or migraines can relate to the fact that when you lie down and you turn the lights off and you're not looking at your TV or your phone, it tends to decrease the um, intensity of your migraine. And doing that on a daily basis um, from a meditation standpoint actually helps with that as well. It frees your mind from self-doubt and internal chatter. So again, you learn how to be less reactive um, when it comes to some of that self-criticism. It reduces anxiety. Um, it generates optimism, self-esteem, confidence, motivation. It restores the function of the digestive system, which we know our immune system is, is based in our digestion. It helps to relax muscle tension, insomnia, fear, and it helps to improve depression. All right, you all can still hear me, right? <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, a little nervous there. Okay, so how do you get started with meditating? So if you're new to meditation, um, these are typically the five tips that I share with folks that are new to meditation. Um, I encourage folks to one, find a quiet, place to practice, right? So we want to be able to designate a spot within the house um, or even your office, because I had a spot in my office um, to meditate, um, that is going to be your meditation practice spot, right? So a lot of people ask me, oh, well, can I just do it in the bed before I go to bed or when I wake up in the morning? I always tell people no especially starting out, because what you really want to do is you want to start to train your brain that this is what meditation is. It, it's requiring me to move from one spot to another to sit and be still, right? And what tends to happen when we're newbies and it comes to meditation is that we do it in the bed and we end up falling asleep. <laughs> so our meditation actually ends up becoming sleep because usually what meditation does is it reveals yourself in layers. And a lot of us are sleep deprived, right? So that's gonna be the first layer of realization that you will experience when it comes to meditation. I mean, there'll be times when you feel like you're in the zone or in that, that present space, you might see colors, you might have memories, there might be just different things that come up in different realizations. But 99% of the time, when you're new to meditation and you know you are a uh, American, you are going to meditate in the bed and you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> so we want to just train our bodies, train our brains that we get up, we go to a spot and we meditate. And your spot can be super simple. It could literally be a corner in the wall. Um, it could be you know you just taking a pillow and putting it by your bed. Um, you can do something elaborate if you want to create a space when it comes to meditation and get cushions and incense and candles and things of that sort. But it doesn't have to be um, super elaborate. It just literally has to be a space that you designate for meditation time. So that's step one. Step two is really gonna be sitting in a comfortable position. Um, and so wherever it is that you create that meditation space, you adopt that meditation space, you just want to make sure that you're going to be comfortable because you're going to be sitting there for a while. So sitting on the floor is going to be something that causes pain um, to your back. Um, if you have poor circulation and your legs tend to fall asleep and things of that sort, um, then you might want to just start meditating in a chair. You can have a chair that you grab from the kitchen um, or, you know, just any chair that you may have in the house and you may want to put a chair or utilize a chair for meditation and just put that chair somewhere and utilize that so that you're sitting in a position that's going to be most comfortable for you. Um, the only time I recommend lying down is if you have a disability, and um, that is something that's recommended um, for you per your doctor. But otherwise, either a meditation cushion or a chair. What you really want to do when you're adopting a meditation practice and you're doing it at home is it's really just about closing your eyes and becoming aware of your breath. And that we can do in several different ways, right? 
I always tell people to just breathe and not manipulate your breath because it gives us a very clear understanding of where we are presently. So if you are noticing that your breath is accelerated, if you are noticing that your breath is shallow or your breath is restricted in any kind of way, then you are really exhibiting um, symptoms of stress, right? And what we wanna do during that practice is to gently slow that down. So as you breathe and you focus on your breath, you will notice that your body will naturally start to slow things down. It will naturally start to relax things. So you don't have to sit and you don't have to um, manipulate or change your breath in any particular way. You can do that. But I always say starting out when it comes to really becoming aware and getting in tune in terms of utilizing your breath to kind of temperature check where you're at. Don't do any manipulation. Just close your eyes, inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose, and just check in and see where your breath is. And as you continue to do it for a couple of minutes, you will start to see that the body starts to respond to being in a state of meditation. You want to sit and observe um, from within and not engage. That's step four. And what we mean by not engaging is going back to that comment that I made with regards to you don't have to um, respond to everything that pops into your mind or pops into your brain, right? So what tends to happen is you start to think about, well, what am I going to eat? Did I pay that bill? You know, I need to go grocery shopping. Do I have enough water? And so all these thoughts and ideas tend to pop into your mind and into your brain when you're sitting and meditating and you don't have to respond to it, right? You don't have to say, okay, well, after this class, I'm going to go grocery shopping, right? Or you don't have to say, oh, I have, to, I do have to pay that bill. Okay, so when I sit, I'm going to, you know, when I get up, I'm going to go do this or I'm going to go do that. That's where our brains like to bring us. And, and what I like to call that is, is the two-year-old brain, right? We have child, uh, children in our brain that literally are tugging at, you know, our pants and are like, listen to me, you know, um, answer me, respond to me. And what we have to do is that we have to train the brain, just almost like you have to teach children, you know, um, there's a time and a place for everything, right? So this is the time and the period for you just to breathe and to not engage. And as you start to learn to not engage, what you will notice is that those thoughts, as they pop into your mind, they will eventually fall to the side. And then you'll go back into a state of being in the present, right? Until another thought pops into your mind. And really what meditation does, it's not about stopping those thoughts from popping into your, your mind. That's really never going to happen, right? You're always going to have a thought or an idea that wants to manifest itself during meditation. Um, what we really strive to do is to slow those thoughts down. So when you first start meditating, you may feel like you're getting bombarded with a whole bunch of questions, a whole bunch of thoughts and ideas or whatever. But as you progress, as you continue with the practice, what you'll notice is that those thoughts and ideas start to slow down and you have more space in between your practice where you're in this state of flow, when you're in this state of meditation. And so that's really what we strive for. And we strive for not being responsive when it comes to those thoughts and ideas. What this teaches us in the physical world, right, is to be less responsive when things come up so that it doesn't stress us out, so that we're not reactive to everything, right? So the next time you're in traffic and someone cuts you off, you know, instead of you being like, ah! and wanting to scream or, you know, curse someone out or yell or shout, you can look at a thing for what it is, right? The next time you're in the workplace and a coworker is annoying you, right? You can look at it and, and not um, be pulled in to being reactive when it comes to stuff because you start to learn to see a thing for what it is, right? And it's just a thing and you don't have to respond to it. So that's one of the beautiful things about meditation and, and continuing the practice. And then 
Step five is really going to be you just opening your eyes and ending your meditation. So just opening your eyes and just observing where you're at, taking in a deep breath, and then going on with the rest of your day. So it really is just five quick steps um, to go ahead and to start and establish a meditation practice. So are there any questions before we go ahead and go into the guided meditation portion? Okay, let's see. It doesn't look like there is. Okay, let's see. Can meditation be benefiting the female to female masturbation? Um, in what way or sense do you mean, um, Oriana? I believe I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. In what sense do you mean allowing you to connect? Um, well, outside of the practice of female masturbation, I would say yes. Um, there's also something, a different type of meditation that's called visualization med meditation, right? Um, so you can visualize, especially if you are um, adopting a female masturbation practice to overcome um, trauma or to, um, you know, experience certain levels of pleasure, you can use meditation from a visualization standpoint to assist with that. Okay, Zakisha, it says, what's the best time to meditate and how long? So, million dollar question. Um, <laughs> it really, oh, and no problem. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, Zakisha, it really depends. Um, it depends on the person, right? Because this is your practice and this is something that you're going to do daily. Um, for me personally, I meditate first thing in the morning. Um, it's like my vitamin. It helps to set my um, intention for the day. Um, but there are times when, you know, I have to catch an early flight or things of that sort. And, you know, I'll meditate in the evening or whenever I can kind of get it in. So, I always say just be gentle with yourself with whatever it is that you know you um, set out to do when it comes to establishing your meditation. For me, it works best to meditate in the morning, um, but there are days that I meditate in the evening. Um, in regards to how long you meditate, I always say when you start off, if you can just start off with five minutes of meditation, and maybe bump that five minutes to 20 minutes, that's great. But if you have difficulty and you're suffering from a lot of anxiety and you are finding it difficult to meditate for five minutes or even 20 minutes, then I say do 60 seconds. I always tell people who suffer from a lot of anxiety and stress um, to do their meditation before they put their key into their car ignition, right? Or if they're taking public transportation as they're sitting down and they're first sitting down. So if you do it for 60 seconds or whatever, and before you start and you actually move and you start to go from, you know, your home to your workplace, I always tell people to use that 60 seconds to just close their eyes, breathe, and connect. And if they're able to continue to do that for about two weeks, then then start to do five minutes. And if you're able to then, then do the five minutes, then do 20 minutes, right? And then if you really, really want to be serious and, and really start to adopt and tap in and, and use meditation and study it from the standpoint of helping you in areas of, you know, um, you know mindfulness, areas of, um, you know, manifestation, areas of, of um, healing trauma, then start to move into an hour. But those are really my recommendations. One minute, five minutes, 20 minutes, or then an hour. Okay, let's see, Stacy is repeating a mantra part of meditation. Repeating a mantra is part of some types of meditation. Um, 
there are different meditation practices. Um, there is the one that I study is mindfulness meditation, um, Vipassana, um, insight meditation. Um, I also studied um, uh, various different types of yoga that help with relaxation. Um, mantra is a part of different forms of meditation. So um, you can incorporate a mantra, um, especially when it comes to like visualization or manifestation, right? Um, if you want to see yourself going somewhere, if you want to see something come into your life, then you can repeat um, mantra as a part of your meditation. Um, that's really when it comes to you wanting to manifest stuff. Mindfulness meditation and the meditation that I primarily teach is really about activating the relaxation response, right? So getting us from a state of being super stressed to a state of being relaxed. Um, but I also use affirmations. And, and after we do this guided meditation, we'll go ahead and do an affirmation um, as well. But I think that when it comes to really wanting to manifest and bring things to you from a certain standpoint, you know, whether that's a job, whether that's love, whether that's healing, mantras are absolutely great. All right, any other questions? Let's see. Okay, great, Stacy. All right, so I think that <clears throat> those are all the questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go into doing a meditation practice. Um, I'm taking myself off a video so that we can just focus on um, our breath and so that we can just focus on really just kind of sitting and relaxing ourselves. And so what we're going to do is we are going to go back to those five steps that we just discussed. And we're going to meditate for a couple of minutes. So I encourage you all um, to follow step one, which is to find a comfortable and quiet spot to practice. And if you all are comfortable, just adjust your position. If you're on the floor, just make sure that your back is straight. Just check and see if there's any tension in your hips and adjust yourself. And if you're in a comfortable position, I invite you to take your palms, place them palms down on your knees if you need a little bit of grounding today. Or palms up if you feel like you need a little bit of energy. Whatever feels comfortable. And then close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, just gently start to tap in and check in with your breath. Without any manipulation, just inhaling and exhaling in through the nose and out through the nose. Just take inventory of your breath at the moment. Notice if it's shallow.
Notice if it's restricted. Notice if it's accelerated. Just take notice without judgment, continuing to breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the nose. Bringing your awareness to your inhale. Just become aware of the breath as it enters the nostrils. Goes down the throat. And airways. and as it fills the lungs. Notice the temperature of the air as it enters the nostrils. Notice the feeling and the sensation of the breath as it fills the lungs. Continuing to inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Start to shift your focus to your exhale. And just notice your breath. As it leaves the lungs goes back up the airways. The throat. And as it exits the nostrils. Notice the temperature of your breath as it leaves the lungs and exits the nostrils.
Notice the feeling, the sensation of the breath as it exits the nostrils. Now bringing your focus back to your inhale and exhale. Just take one last inventory of your breath at the present moment. Just notice if the breath is slowed down. If the lungs are a little bit more relaxed. If your inhales are a little bit deeper. Just take notice without judgment. Continuing to inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Start to bring your awareness to the very top of your head. You can connect to that awareness by making it a color. It could be a ball of light. It could be a feeling or sensation like warm water pouring over the head. Whatever it is that you connect to. Just bring that to the very top of your head and allow it to travel down into the forehead bringing with it a feeling of calm, a feeling of relaxation. Now allow that awareness to travel down into the eyes. into the cheeks, into the jaw, and around the mouth. And with your lips still closed, just gently separate the teeth from one another. Relaxing the tongue fully. Relaxing the jaw fully. Relaxing the neck and throat. Allow that awareness to travel to the tops of the shoulders, allowing the shoulders to fall away from the ears deeper and deeper with each exhale.
allow that awareness to travel down into the arms, starting with the upper arm, down into the elbows, into the forearms, the wrist, into the palms, and down into the fingers, starting with the pinky. the ring fingers, middle fingers, index, and thumbs, Send that awareness back up through the arms and into the shoulder blades, focusing on the area in between the shoulder blades. Continuing to inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Send that awareness down into the center back. Into the lower back. down into the hips, and just allowing the hips to fall open deeper and deeper with each exhale. Allow that awareness to travel down from the hips into the thighs. Into the knees. into the calves and shins. From the calves and shins down into the ankles. down into the feet. And just allow that awareness to travel out through the toes, starting with the littlest, making your way over to your big toes.
And just allow that awareness to travel and circulate through the body a few more times. Just swiftly starting at the top of the head, making its way down through the channels and out through the toes. One more time at the very top of the head, just swiftly traveling down through the body. But this time, allow your body to identify any tension or tightness that you may still have. And allow that awareness to take with it that tension and tightness, anything that doesn't serve you at this moment and just allow it to travel down and exit through the toes. Breathing in through the nose, and breathing out through the nose. And before we end today's session, we're going to do something that's known as a cleansing breath. We're going to do this three times. And what a cleansing breath is, is just allowing our body to fully release and submit to our practice. We're going to inhale deeply through our nose and exhale through our mouth with a sigh. Repeat after me. Inhale deeply through the nose. And exhale. Again, inhale deeply through the nose and exhale through the mouth. One last time, inhale deeply through the nose and exhale. Before we open our eyes, just going to do a few affirmations. You can say them out loud. You can say them in your mind's eye. I will say them once and then you can just repeat them to yourself. The first affirmation is I honor my body as the temple of my soul. The second affirmation is I am grateful for my healthy, beautiful body. The third affirmation is I am calm, confident, and centered. And the fourth affirmation is I feel stronger, more alive and energized each day. And the fifth affirmation is I honor myself and care for all of my needs. And 
The sixth affirmation is I joyfully nourish my mind, body, and spirit. And the seventh and last affirmation is I accept that abundant good health is my natural state. If you haven't opened your eyes yet, I invite you to do so. You can wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingertips, and just gently open your eyes when you're ready. And so thank you, everybody. Um, that was today's session on the art of pause. So I hope you all left with an understanding, a better understanding of uh, mindfulness and meditation and why we should adopt a practice. But I also hope that you feel that it's something that you all could adopt and take on and um, you know, adopt on a daily basis. I'm going to look in the chat and see if there are any questions and go from there. Um, okay, let's see. To Keisha, <laughs> do you have a YouTube channel for guided meditation? Um, I do not, but it has been something that's been asked of me. Um, and so I think that that is probably going to be something that I go ahead and adopt and probably just do quick five minute um, guided meditations that people can use and utilize. Um, if you are in Atlanta, um, I teach meditation at the uh, in town salt room. Um, I do a really cool guided meditation that incorporates dry salt therapy, um, which helps to detoxify the respiratory system and um, guided meditation where we focus on breath work. So um, that's where I teach out of. Okay, can you put the previous slide up for a second, please? The one with the affirmation, sure. There you go, if you wanna take a screen grab of those. Okay, let's see what other questions there were in the chat. Okay, let's see. Um, will the slides be made available? Um, I will connect with um, Tracy and Brooke on that, but that's fine with me. Um, what do you do when something comes up? So Tina, what, come, what do you do when something comes up in your mind and in your brain during meditation? I take it that that's your question. Um, if it is, what you do when something comes up is you literally just breathe through it, right? You start to become a little bit more intentional with your breath. And if you feel like you're getting bombarded with thoughts and ideas, that cleansing breath that we just did where you're inhaling deeply through your nose and exhaling through your mouth is something that you can do in order to slow some of those thoughts um, down. So you're literally just going to breathe through your um um, when things pop into your mind, you're either going to just naturally continue to breathe and ignore what's popping into your brain, or you're going to be intentional about your breath through doing a cleansing breath. Um, will we be getting a break after you so I can come on and let them? Okay, perfect. No, that's but a physical reaction, like increased heart rate. Okay, so Tina, so increased heart rate. So 
you want to focus more so on a cleansing breath. Um, increased heart rate is kind of more like some people when they try to meditate, at, at, you know, in the beginning, they, they feel more anxiety than they do um, relaxation. So in that sense, I would focus on doing that 60 second meditation of just being still and breathing. But if you're experiencing an increased heart rate, I would do the cleansing breath method more so. Inhaling, exhaling. So what you're doing is you're breaking up that anxiety and that energy and you're sending it outside of the body. So that method should probably work better for you in terms of if you're experiencing an increased heart rate. And if you want to reach out to me, um, we could definitely talk about it. Um, there is my contact information if you all want to take a screen grab. Um, but um, 